All right, we're at uh, Crop Diagnostic School here in Carmen, Manitoba, joined by Marla Rickman of Manitoba Agriculture. And Marla, you have uh, hidden some uh, a stash in, in this cornfield here. Can you uh, show us what uh, what the treasure is buried in, in the soil here? Sure. So just before May Long weekend, I came out to John's Corn Plots. And uh, just behind the camera here, there is an area of forage. So approximately 10 feet, 8 feet away, um, I went and I buried a material to indicate microbial activity in the corn and the forage just to see what it looks like. So I'm going to see what I can find in the corn here. Thankfully these are pre-dug so I don't have to get too dirty doing it. All right. Not sure if you can tell what this is supposed to be. Or what it used to be. Or what it used to be. I'll give you the comparison in the forage. Oh, there, there we go. We can tell a little bit more from what this used to be. So uh, I uh, emptied out the Brandon Walmart of men's underwear and uh, washed them up. Important to note that you need clean underwear, brand new to start with, but give them a, a quick washing and then we buried them in the soil. Left the waistbands at the surface so that I could find them again, but the waistband's not going to break down. Basically the microbes in the soil can't tell the difference between the non-organic Walmart purchased carbon source uh, versus the crop residue carbon source that's in the soil. And so they're trying to work away at breaking it down. We've been working at, with Crop Diagnostic School talking about soil health and if soil health is an, or if microbial activity is an indicator of soil health, then which one of these pairs of underwear came from the forage? Most people think, well, it's probably going to be this pair because they think of the forage as having more microbial activity. But in this case, what we did was we buried the underwear closer to the fertilizer band. And so in order to break down carbon, the microbes need nitrogen as an energy source. And so they really went to town on this pair of underwear and broke them down. So that one's from the corn. So this one, yeah, this one is from the corn. Uh, so not exactly what everybody was expecting to see. But uh, not shocking to me just because of where I placed them. It was pretty close to, yeah, to that fertilizer band. The other thing that's going to be impacting microbial activity is going to be oxygen in the soil or the amount of moisture in the soil. This corn was tilled prior to being seeded. And so um, John did a good job of oxygenating the soil and tilling it up quite nicely. Also, um, the one issue that we have in terms of where we are in the lie of the land is that we're on a very, very slight slope going down. And so the forage would be in a lower lying area. It's not standing water right now, but it's standing water about 20 feet away. And so there could be a chance that just a little, a little less oxygen in the system. But that being said, um, it's very hard to compare these two systems in terms of how healthy they are. Um, because John is quite happy with how this underwear looks for his corn plots because of the fact that he's looking for high turnover of residue. And so he's happy with the fact that, you know, the bugs are very active and working at breaking down residue because they're going to need to continue breaking down this corn residue for next year to be able to plant whatever's going into it. So this makes him happy. Um, this makes me happy to see that the forage is actually a slower decomp. Um, it's a slower rate and a lot more of the carbon in this case is actually going to be going down into the roots and becoming a part of that soil and sequestering it as opposed to the carbon in this case with the uh, underwear in the corn. A lot of this is just going up into the atmosphere. Again, it's what he's trying to achieve for this corn plot. But if you're thinking about it from an environmental standpoint, then maybe you want your underwear to look a little bit more like this. So your definition of soil health kind of depends on, on that. Yeah, the definition of soil health is going to depend on that. So the, the bugs are a big part of that mix between, you know, it's the biology, it's the physics and the chemistry of the soil all coming together in order to create organic matter to stabilize aggregates. If I was going to compare the two with the tillage versus under um, a forage, there's no tillage here. The only activity is mowing it. Um, I'm going to be quite happy with what that soil is going to look like. Um, but and it's probably going to be healthier. It just didn't have that same level of microbial breakdown in this case because that's not necessarily what we're trying to achieve or looking at high rates of, of carbon turnover as being a good thing uh, in, a, in, a, in a healthy soil. So this is just, I guess, something to say for microbes are good, um, but we do like that slower rate of decomposition. Um, and uh, yeah, I it's hard to compare the two systems, right? And so they're very dramatically different in terms of what the underwear look like at the end of it. But like I always say, 
Comparing health across two, two very extreme systems is a little difficult to do. In the same way that comparing health across two different soil types is very difficult to do, we have to compare apples to apples instead of with oranges. If you're trying to achieve something like organic matter um, increases on a soil, you can only reach so much on a, on a, say, a sandy soil, but you can achieve so much more on a clay loam soil. And so the comparisons have to be considered different between the two. All right just like with underwear. Yes. And you've held them long enough. I think we'll let you put them down now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>